last week. Did that change anybody? Did it change you? Don't answer me before you do. If it did, amen. Amen. Okay, amen. But if it was just another teaching and it went in this ear and out this ear, you didn't get anything. You didn't hear nothing. You didn't hear the Lord. You heard me, my voice, but you didn't hear the Lord. You hear me? Because I give a lot of scriptures, so I'm, the Lord's talk, doing a lot of speaking to us. Now, we can sit in here like many people do at church, and when they're through, when they leave, most of them can't tell you what the preacher was preaching on. They're just there. Do we want to, like I said, don't say anything, but do we want to be that way? Or we sincerely, sincerely from our heart want to hear God? And when he tells us, hey, this is the way it should be, are we going to follow it? Are we going to follow it? I do not want this church, I do not want it to be like churches out there. Like I said, they go to church on Sunday, that's it. They take their Bible, they put it somewhere on the table. It stays there all week. They pick it up on Sunday morning again. Is that being a Christian? No. That's not being a Christian. A Christian, we're going to find out, well, a disciple is someone who is hungry. Hungry, just like we hunger. If we go a while without eating, we're ready to eat, right? But that's the way we should be for the word of God. All we're hungry for it. That's what I want from you guys. To be hungry for the words of God. To be hungry. Not just, well, Lana, let's go. It's Tuesday night. No. Lana, you ready? Like excitement. Uh, I really don't want to go. I'm tired. Huh? Y'all hear me? Now, if you got that kind of attitude, most of the time you're not going to get anything. I, I, I'm, I got to say it, but I'm not bragging. I couldn't wait till Friday nights. My teacher taught on Friday nights. Friday nights. Bible study on Friday night? Come on, man. But I couldn't, just like when I was lost, I couldn't wait till Friday so I could go drinking and partying. Couldn't wait. But well, that's how I got on listening to this teacher, listening to the words of God. That's the way I got. The Lord changed me. I became a new creature. Amen. Amen. Everything changed. I was hungry for the words. And like I said, I'm here, what, 45 minutes average? Maybe an hour? Maybe. This man talked for two and a half hours without stopping, with no breaks. Two and a half hours I sat there. But I heard every word he said. Yes. Amen. I was hungry, and that's what I pray for y'all, to, to, to be excited when it's, hey, it's Tuesday, can't wait. Y'all hear me? Now, if that's going to happen, I don't know, but that's what I want from y'all. Yeah. Not for me, for you, yeah. for you to have that excitement. I'm going to hear the words of God tonight. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Oh, dear Heavenly Father. Be with us now, Lord. Speak to us. Open our hearts, our spirit. Let us receive your words, Father God, and your words only. Because you're, you're the only one who has the words that are beneficial to us, Lord. You're the only one who has the words that can help us through our life to walk into this wicked, lost world. You have the words for us, Lord. So guide us, Father. Guide us. Give us strength. Give us power. Which you already have. What we need to pray, Lord, we need to use that power. You are greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. So you are in us, Lord. Let us learn how to use you. Every time there's temptations, whatever, storm, trouble, whatever it is, let us remember you are inside of us, Father. And we praise you for it. Just speak to us now in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Christian or disciple? There's a difference. There's a difference. And we're gonna, the Lord's going to show us through the scriptures. He's going to show us what's the difference. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. This is the Lord speaking. Examine yourself. What did God just say? Check yourself. Look at yourself. How many of us do that? How many of us look at ourselves and say, Am I, am I walking with the Lord? Whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate, reprobates. Reprobates. Have we not obeyed some of the words of the Lord that he tells us in the Bible? Do we obey them? Now, like I said, I'm always asking questions, but y'all don't ever answer. Don't ever raise your hands or anything. But do we? Do we obey the words of the Lord? And that's how we examine ourselves. Am I obeying? I know what I'm supposed to do here because God said, but do you do it? Examine yourself. Am I walking with the Lord? Am I walking in the power of the Holy Spirit? At this, you're supposed to. Be, God said, "Examine yourselves." Not, not the preacher, not the teacher. Uh, you, you know, I'm not supposed to examine you. You examine yourselves. And if you're not examining yourselves, guess what? It's a sin, because God said, "Examine yourself." He wasn't asking; He's telling us, "Examine yourselves. Check yourselves out." Am I walking with the Lord? Amen? Amen? We have a hard time believing that we can do what he says a lot of times. We have a hard time with that. But we need, we need to trust him. We need to trust him. Believe me. Believe me. I trust the Lord, okay? Amen. I mean, I... I, I, but there's sometimes y'all might think I'm bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you the truth. I have trusted the Lord in a lot of stuff where there's no way I could have trusted him before. But because I turn to the Lord more and more each day, every day, I can trust him. Things that are happening in my life, I know you got it, Lord. I know you got it. I don't let it stress me out. I don't let it depress me. Okay. The Lord says this in Haggai 1.5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. There's another way of saying examine yourselves. Consider your ways. Are the ways I'm walking, is that the way of the Lord? Consider or your ways. You know, how many of us, con how many of us consider our ways? How many of us do that? How many is all, I mean, this is, this teaching is going to, it's going to teach us we need to check ourselves out. Oh, I'm a Christian and that's it. Well, check, are you? Check yourself out. The Lord said, I want you to check yourself. I want you to consider your ways. Look at your heart. Okay. That's where it begins is right here in the heart. Your ways begin here. And sometimes, sometimes your heart is in the wrong place. But when you're checking yourself out, you can, uh-oh, my heart's in the wrong place. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. Oh, my gosh. There's a path before each person that seems right, seems right, but it ends in death. When the Christian doesn't trust the Lord and they find reasons to do things their way, the result is going to be wrong. Whose way down here do any of us have a better way than the Lord? Nobody. This is when we need to repent and forsake our ways. There is a path before each person that seems to be right. We think, oh, I think this way is better. But 
its end is death. We're not talking about physical death. We're even not, we're not even talking about, uh, well, we're kind of talk, yeah, talking about a spiritual death because you're not walking with the Lord. When you're not walking with the Lord, you're just like when you were lost. You were dead. Y'all hear me? When, you was, when we were lost, we were dead. I've, I've already said that a hundred times. But when we're born again and we do things our way, what seems right to us, we're dead. Y'all hear me? We need to be like Job when he cried out to the Lord in Job 13, 23. How many are my iniquities and sins make me to know? How many are my how many are my iniquities and sins? Job is asking that question. He's asking the Lord, how many are my sins, my iniquities and sins? And he says, make me to know. Job is saying, make me to know my transgressions and my sin. Definition of sin is you're, you're rebellious against the Lord. You're not doing his will. You're listening to the devil. Uh, iniquity is doing opposite from what the Lord wants. Transgressions means you choose to purposely sin. So all these mean the same thing as sin. And Job says, hey, let me know. Show me my sin. Show me. How many of us, how many of us say that? Lord, show me my sin. That's the way we examine ourselves. Lord, show me my sins. Show me. That's a... Uh, that's one to walk with the Lord. When you go to the Lord in prayer and you say, Lord, show me. Show me my sins. Why? So we can stop sinning. Amen. So we can stop sinning. Right. Amen? Amen. David, David said to the Lord in Psalms 26 2, put me on trial. This is what David said. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Wow. Test my motives and my heart. How many of us can say that to the Lord? Yeah. Oh, Lord, check Check my heart. Check my motives. Ooh, watch it. <laughs> if you're going to say that, yeah, watch it. But if you're scared to say it, then apparently they're not right. Y'all hear me? Your motives are wrong. We are to be, a, we are, we are, we're going to be afraid to say that. Especially when we know after examining ourselves, and we know we're not walking with the Lord. We know we're not in His will. We're not walking in His will. But He knows. He's telling us. He's saying, "I'm not. I'm not going to examine you. I'm not. You know, the Lord already knows us from the beginning to the end. He already knows us. But the Lord wants us, us, to know us." Amen? Amen? That's what he wants. Reread in Psalms 32, 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquities have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquities of my sin. Selah. When you ever see the word selah, that's the Lord's way of saying, meditate on what I just said. Okay? Now the three words that have the same idea. It's, it's evilness, it's lawlessness, it's disobedience. That's sin. Just like a, a sin, iniquities, transgression. It's, it's bottom line, it's sin. It's against the Lord. This sin, this forgiveness only comes when we truly, listen to me, when we truly hate sin. Hate sin. Have we gotten there yet? You will. Well, how do you know, Jesse? Because I did. And I'm, on, and I'm no better than y'all. You hear me? I've gotten there. I've gotten to where I hate sin because I've gotten so close to my father. Y'all hear me? Because I've gotten so close to him, I hate sin. And if I can do it, I know y'all can do it because we're all the same here. Because I'm up here, does, does that make me higher? No, I talked last week, no. In God's eyes, we're all in the same boat here. Right. It's just, I have a gift. And I believe my next teaching is going to be on gifts. Okay? 
when you can no longer take the pressure of your hard heart of sin or sins that we're doing, that we are doing, who in here is perfect? We do fall and we do sin. But just like I've said before, does that, because of that, does that mean we're going to sin every day? No. People seem to think we're going to sin every day. No. You can go days, you can, listen to me, you can go weeks without sinning. The closer you walk with the Lord, the closer you walk with Him, oh my gosh, sin. If we still have it because we're in a sinful nature, every now and then it will come out. So we're still sinners. But the closer you get to the Lord, the less that sin will be. So no, no, no. Sin, people take it for granted. Well, you know, we're going to sin every day. Well, you're a liar. Because we don't have to sin every day. We don't have to sin every week. And if you really got a good close with the Lord, you don't have to sin every month. Y'all hear me? Amen? When you find yourself getting deeper and deeper, further from the Lord because you're doing your thing, it's dangerous, dangerous ground, dangerous ground. Because when you get off, when you take the Lord off the throne that he's supposed to be on, once you become a born-again Christian, you put yourself back on the throne. You think that's good? <laughs> no. That is not good. You get... Remember, I've said this before. When you let a little sin in, you let it in, it gets bigger, bigger, and bigger. You get further and further away from the Lord. And what happens when you get away from the Lord? You're out here on your own. God is not protecting you. I'm not saying you lost your salvation, but you're, you're, you don't have his protection. It scared me to death if I didn't think God was watching over me. Y'all hear me? That's why I like to stay close to the Lord and walk with him. We need to do what the prodigal son did. Y'all know about the prodigal son, right? Jesus told a story about a son who left his father. Luke 15, verses 18 and 19. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, my father, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. How many times have I told you when we sin, who we're sinning against? The Lord. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. When we get away from the Lord, get away from him. I mean, we're out there on our own, and we finally realize, what am I doing? And we come back to the Lord. When we come back to him, we come back to him so humbly because we've walked away from him that, that we say, Lord, I'll feed the pigs if you want to. I'll be whatever servant you want me to be. Just let me back. And amen, God always brings us back. If it's coming from here, he always brings us back. Amen. When we truly do this from the heart, the Lord does know. He does know. Psalms 44, 21, Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. Of the heart. Look at me. I can fool y'all. I could be fooling y'all right now, acting like, hey, uh, I'm a teacher, but I have the wrong motives or I'm just doing it for whatever. I can fool you, but can I fool him? If I can't fool him, why in the heck am I worried about fooling y'all? Huh? But it's vice versa also. You can fool me. Come to Bible study, come to church on Tuesday night, and act like all religious, like you're a good Christian, but when you get out there, you're a different person. I see it all the time. I was at work one time, and they had a guy that claimed to be a Christian, and this, the lost ones that weren't Christians came up to me and said, you know, when you're, not, when you're around, he talks about the Lord and blah, blah, blah. But when you're not around, 
He's telling dirty jokes and cursing right with us. God sees that. Y'all hear me? You think you're out there by yourself? Mm -mm. God is right there. Right there. When you're with lost guys at work or whatever, or lost kids at school, he's right there watching. Don't think he's not there. Okay? Jeremiah 17, 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the ruins even to give every man according his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Of his doings. If we're doing bad, we will be chastised. And if we're doing good, he will bless us. Amen? So we have a choice. We have a choice. We want the Lord to punish us, or do we want the Lord to bless us? Amen. Acts 15, 8. And God, which knoweth the hearts, amen, amen. bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And to these, these verses I'm showing you, God knows our hearts. You can fool your brother, your sister. You can fool whoever you want. You can't fool God. You can't fool God. Remember that. You cannot fool God. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now that you know God knows our, your heart, that he knows, you think you've been hiding something, but now that you know that he knows, ask for forgiveness. That's all you need to do. Say, Lord, forgive me. Amen? Amen? This is when you'll find true peace, true peace in your heart, when you know you're right with God. Amen? Amen. You want real peace, you want real rest, be right with God. Amen? Amen. Now we also read this on examining ourselves in the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper says the same thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. This is the Lord's Supper, right before taking the Lord's Supper. But let a man examine himself. That's why we do, when we have the Lord's Supper, what do I do? I give you all a minute to examine yourselves, to make you sure you're right with the Lord. Examine. And let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth or drinketh unworthy, when you're not walking with the Lord, that's unworthy. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. You're not caring about God's body. Did you know our bodies is the temple of the Lord, right? Our, these bodies are not ours anymore. They belong to God. This is his temple. And he says, you don't care about the body. You don't care about the body if you're out there sinning. You're being unworthy. And when you do that and you take the Lord's sober, uh, you're bringing damnation to yourself. These are the words of God. Do y'all hear me? This is serious stuff. You know, when you hear the words of God, when you hear the words of God, these are the most, you can't find any words that are more important than what God says. Amen? Amen. Amen. And bottom line, Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. What it's saying is your, your simple nature is fighting against the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is fighting against your sinful nature. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. The only time the demon's sinful nature can beat the Spirit is when you let it. When we let it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Always remember that. That's a good verse to remember. Remember that. And when you're following the Lord and his ways, the lust of the flesh loses. The lust of the flesh, the lust, when you say lust, right away we think of women lusting after women. No. Lust is anything that you're wanting that's not of the Lord. Y'all hear me? That's the lust of the flesh. When you want things that are not of the Lord. It just doesn't have to do with women. 
The Lord wants us to check ourselves out through this teaching. He wants us to examine ourselves. Everyone in here, while, while, while the Lord is speaking to us, and when we leave, that's what we should be doing. Okay, I got to check myself up. How was I over here or how was I over there or how did I react to this? Just stuff like that. You know, what was your reaction? Was it in the spirit or was it in the flesh? Luke 14, verse 25 through 33. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, this is Jesus. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot me be my disciple. Did y'all hear that? Jesse, the Lord wants us to hate our father, our mother, our wife, our children. No, no, no. Because if he did, then this would be con contrary, contradict the Ten Commandments when, when he said to honor father and mother, right? Mm -hmm. No. I have a teaching on this. Nothing, nothing, nobody should be equal to Jesus, your love for Jesus. Right. That's what he's saying. Your love for Jesus should be so much higher and greater than your parents and your family. That it seems like you hate them. That's what it means. You're putting Jesus here and your family, your loved ones here. Okay? This doesn't mean at all that you hate them, but you love God so much. It seems like you hate your family. That's what it's saying. Okay? I did a teaching, like I said, I did a teaching on the verse. And that's what it means in a nutshell. You love God so much, it seems like you hate your family. That's what that means. He does, you know, there's people who will take that and, and, and they think God is really wanting us to hate our mother, father, you know. <sighs> that's why he made teachers, okay? When we put our family before him, we're shown we love them more. And we can't be his disciples. We can't be his disciples. When we learn all about the Lord and become more mature in the scriptures, but we still can't be his disciples, be a disciple, what does that mean? It means we need to get closer. We need to get more hungry for the word and get closer to the Lord. Not reading your Bible, is that getting closer to the Lord? Coming to church once a week. Is that getting closer to the Lord? Hope y'all are listening to me. Getting closer to the Lord is reading his words every day. You can ask Jody. Every day. Not reading, studying. And I believe that's why I have to give. Because the Lord, the Lord put it on me. Because I'm so hungry for his words. And, I'm, and I love teaching his words or preaching his words. I love it. This is a joy to me. I love it. And what I love more, even more than that is I'm, I want to help y'all. I want to help y'all be powerful Christians. Huh? Powerful Christians. Because I want y'all on the battlefield out there in the dark world. Yes, I want you on the battlefield. I don't want you at home being scared. Y'all hear me? Scared Christians live defeated lives. Disciples, they're on the battlefield. On the battlefield. Every morning when they wake up, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with what I need to be out there against the devil and the demons. Amen? Amen. We have a lot of saved people who are Christians, but very, very few disciples. Very few disciples. Now, what does it mean to be a disciple? It means someone who wants to learn. And follow and obey the Lord. That's what a disciple is. Someone who wants to follow him, but not only follow him, but obey him. Being obedient to his words. Amen? Amen. Who are we putting first? 
when we know the, what the Lord wants. One thing, one thing, and I've seen it more than once, when you don't witness to your family, when you do not witness to your family about Jesus, about the Savior, about your Father, your God, to get them born again, because you know where they're going, if you do not witness to them, who are you putting first? Because you don't want them to get upset with you. So you don't say nothing to them. But God said to witness. So who are you obeying? Who are you putting first? Your family or God? Really, seriously, think about that. If I'm, if I'm scared or I don't want to upset my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, whoever, I don't want to upset them. Okay, well, you're putting them first. Y'all hear me? There's ways of putting uh, someone before the Lord, and that's one way. That's just one way, okay? You're afraid they're going to get upset and mad at you. So what? At least you've showed them the truth, and if they go to hell, if they never give their life to the Lord, is that our fault? Ezekiel 3.18, God said he's made us watchmen. He says, if you, warn the, if you warn the wicked of their wicked ways, their, their, their sins, their blood is on their own hands. But if we don't warn them, God said, if, but if you don't warn them, if we do not warn them, their blood is on our hands. Y'all hear me? You want blood on your hands? It's just like killing them. In fact, you did kill them. If you didn't give them the plan of salvation to be born again, to get saved, you did kill them for not telling them. Y'all hear me? That's why Paul said in Acts chapter 20, verse 26, Paul said, I am pure from the blood of all men. Now, a lot of people don't know what that means. I know what it means. Why? Because the Lord showed me. Because I studied. But it's because of Ezekiel. If you don't warn the wicked of their wicked ways, their blood is on your hands. So what Paul is saying I've witnessed to everybody that's come my way. There's no blood on my hands. Amen? Amen? That's the way we need to be. That's the way we want. We should want to be. Right. Amen? Amen? And remember Job? He lost everything, including his family. He lost everything and his family. Why? Because he would not curse God. Y'all hear me? Because he wouldn't curse God. He lost everything. And we're talking about family, why, everything. That's putting God first. We need to look at Daniel when he became a slave. He became a slave. And he spent 70 years in Babylon. He went in, he went in at 17 years old. He was 17 years old when he became a slave. He was a teenager. For, 17, for 70 years, he was in his 80s. When he, was, when he was thrown into the lion's den because he wouldn't give his God up. He put his own life, his own life on the line for God. He, let, he was not obedient to the, law, to the king that wanted him to do this. No. Go ahead, throw me in there. But God is number one. God is first in my life, and I will give my life for that. Are we seeing what being a disciple is? Those who know about Daniel know how much the Lord used him. He was in Babylon. He was a slave. But the Lord used him. Amen. He was a man of God. A man of God. He, we see how he chose to honor. To honor our Lord. That's the way you honor him. Is by putting them first. Putting them first. Instead of getting in the flesh and bound down to whatever. Well, if you don't do this, no, I'll do it. I'll do it because you don't want to get killed. A disciple will give his life for the Lord. And we have a lot of them overseas right now in these other countries that are. They're giving their life for the Lord. So it can be done. Amen. We need to pray for those people over there. One of the religious experts <clears throat> of the law asked Jesus, which is the great commandment in the law? In Matthew 22, 34, 
Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy heart, with all of your heart and soul, and with all thy mind. You want to be a disciple? This is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. This is pretty much uh, of the first Ten Commandments. Following the Ten Commandments doesn't save us now. Okay? Doesn't save us. But giving the Lord all of our heart, soul, and mind, all of it. Like I, told, like I told someone before, they're a smoker. They're a Christian, but they're a smoker. And he says, he gave his life to the Lord. I said, well, did you give him your all? All your heart, soul, and mind? He said, yeah. I said, well, why are you still smoking? He said, oh, I'm not getting rid of this. I said, then you didn't give him all your heart. I said, now, we have sin in our life. I had sin in my drink, smoke, but when I gave my heart to the Lord, I said, Lord, I, am, I can't stop. On me, I can't stop this. I went to the Lord to give me the strength to stop it, and he did. But if you give a sin to the Lord, it's something you like. Something you like. But if you go to him and say, Lord, I like this, but I want to get rid of it for you, amen. But if you're saying, oh, I gave the Lord all my heart, but I'm not giving him my cigarettes. That's different. You're saying, Lord, you can have everything but this. Is he a born-again Christian? Did he do this? Like I said, you can do this and still smoke, but you want to, you want to quit because you know it's not of God. You want to. But when a person says, I am not quitting this, then you didn't give it your all. Can we as Christians obey the commandments the Lord gives us? Honor your father and mother. I don't have a problem with that. But there's some things that might be a little hard for some of us. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. If he would have just said, husbands, love your wife, well, okay. But when he said, as Christ loved the church, what did Christ do for us? We're the church. What did he do for us? Not only did he suffer and die for us, but he forgives us. Every, from the heart, every time we come to him, he forgives us, right? So it's like, okay, this command, eh, for some men, that's a hard. This is hard for them. To love their wives, okay. But as Christ loved the church, now that's, that's different. Some husbands can't do that. Ephesians 5.22, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as unto the Lord. That's a hard for women, for wives to do. Oh, submit to submit myself to my husband. No, okay, but then he, but, but then the Lord says, "As on to me." So if, a, if I see a wife that's not submitting to her husband, she's not submitting to the Lord either. You hear me? That's what I'm saying. Uh, I know your father, and mother. Yeah, we, I can do that one. But nah, but there's some other things here we need to do. Are we doing them? Can we do them? The question is not, can we do them? Do we want to do them? Because we can do them. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, we, we can do these things. Right. Our children, our brothers and sisters, and even our life itself should come here and God here. God should be so far above us over, over my own life, my love for him is more love than my own life. Y'all hear me? That's love in the Lord. That's an agape love. That's what God has for us is an agape love. He didn't say we, we couldn't be saved. He's not saying we can't be saved by, by not obeying this. He's just saying uh, you can't be a Christian. You can't be a disciple. You can be a Christian, you know, you can be a Christian and save and disobey me, but if you want to be my disciple, right. you obey my words. Right. Amen? Amen? Now, remember the teaching we had on Martha and Mary? 
when the Jesus came to their house to eat. Remember that? Martha was complaining to Jesus about Mary, how she was just sitting there listening to Jesus. Remember? I don't know if y'all remember that teaching, but two sisters, one's in the kitchen getting everything ready, and the other sister's just sitting there listening to Jesus. Listening to Jesus. She's not helping. Luke 10, verse 41 42. But the Lord said to her, because Martha was complaining about Mary, okay? My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary has discovered listening to the Lord is more important than getting whatever it is ready, Amen. cooking, whatever it is. Listening when the Lord is speaking, when Jesus is speaking, that's more important than anything else. And that's what it's showing here. Amen. Martha was worried about all these things in life. When Jesus said, there's only one thing in life that comes before all that. Learning of me. Amen. Amen. Oh. Should Jesus be number one in our life? Yes. We're learning yes. And we're learning that if we do put him number one, we're a disciple. Christians seem to, to seem to put just about everything before the learning of the Lord. I mean, this is a church. This is a Bible study. I've told a lot of people, and I hope y'all have told a lot of people. But look who's here. Y'all hear me? Yep. Uh, well, you know, I'm tired, or I got to take – uh, my kid to baseball practice or, or anything, anything. Anything you put before learning, because the Lord said learn, learn of him. Anything we put in front of learning of our Lord is wrong. You're putting, you're putting whatever it is, you're putting it before the Lord. Now, Christians do that, but disciples don't, okay? Disciples don't. A disciple is... It's someone who is like what it says in Matthew 5, 6. And like I said earlier, blessed are they, speaking about the disciples, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. And what is the righteousness? The Lord. How are you going to know about righteousness? You got to learn it. You got to study it. For they shall be filled. The Lord will fill us. Fill us with what? With peace, happiness, and joy because we're learning of him. Amen? Amen? Jesus said in Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Come unto me. The Lord says, Come to me. The Lord always wants us to come to him. Amen? Amen? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Whatever is burdening you in your life, whatever it is, the Lord says, I will give you rest. This is what his words does. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, and learn of me, and learn of me. That's the way he gives us rest. That's the way he does is by us learning of him. Yeah. Amen? Amen? For I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. How many of us want more rest on our souls? Amen? Amen. How are we going to get it? Learning of him. Amen? Amen? So is this church important? Is this Bible study important? For your rest, for your peace. Mm -hmm. But not only here, not just on Tuesday nights, remember that. <laughs> Amen. How are we going to get rest? Learning of Him. Learning. Just believing in Him? Mm -mm. No. Devil believes in Him. He ain't got no rest. Okay? So that's not enough. Faith, well, faith of what? If you're not learning of him, how do you know what, you, what to have faith in? Y'all hear me? That's why he said, learn of me, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. I will take care of your problems. Oh, God. oh my gosh. People, listen to me. I got problems in my life. You hear me? I have problems in my life. 
But, but, Jesus is first. Jesus is first. There's things in my life that bring me down, but as soon as I put Jesus first, amen, amen, he makes me happy. Like I said, your wife, your husband, your kids, we're all going to fail each other. We're going to fail each other. Okay, we're going to. But there's one who will not fail you. <laughs> Amen? Amen? <laughs> you have one that will not fail you. So being a disciple is the learning of our Lord. And not only learning, but doing. Once we learn whatever it is we learn, then do it. Live that way. Amen? Amen. When we walk this way, verse 30, for my yoke is easy <laughs> and my burden is light. Amen. Isn't that the kind of life you want to live? Yeah. I know I do. What more can we ask for? God is good, people. God is good. The problem with Christians, they don't want to give, give it all to Jesus. So they carry it on themselves. And the reason they carry it on themselves is because they don't learn of him. And the reason they don't learn of him is because they don't put him first. See how all this is together? When we become a child of God, <laughs> our problems, our problems, our problems are no longer our problems. They're his. They're his. God wants some. Do you hear me? God wants your problems. He says, give them to me. Why are you carrying them? I'm your God. I'll take care of them. Just sit back. Relax. How many of us can do that? Well, as we grow, as we learn... We can do that. Amen? Amen. Now there's more. I got one more part to this. Amen. But we're learning what the difference is in being a Christian and a disciple. A disciple is hungry. A disciple wants to learn about the Lord. He's hungry and thirsty for the Lord. And he doesn't let these other stuff, you know, you work, okay, you have to work. But other things that are pleasurable, you should not put that before the Lord. Lord comes before pleasure. You hear me? Because if you put the Lord before that pleasure, then you get real pleasure. You hear me? The real pleasure, pleasure is living for the Lord. That's the real pleasure. Right. Amen? Amen? Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord. We love it when you speak to us. We love it when you open our eyes to your truth. And that's what we want is your truth, Father God, and only your truth. We have no other gods. You are our own living God. You're our own living Father. You, you are our Father. And Father, you love us so much. You want all of our problems. You want us to have peace. You want us to have rest. That's what you want for your children. So thank you, Father. Thank you for your words. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can't say it enough. And Lord, I just want to lift it up one more time. Father, let us know that as long as we're listening and hearkening to you, we don't have to worry about the virus. We don't have to worry about the disease. And Father God, I am standing on that verse. You said, as long as we listen and obey you, we don't have to worry about these diseases. So Father God, we stand on that. We stand on it because we believe you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.